What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you a little bit of an update after the campfire stream with the devs for the mid-season patch update and boy, there's a lot of news. So first and foremost, let me say that they are not nerfing Spearborn. So everybody can sit back and relax, just take a chill pill. Spearborn is not getting nerfed. However, Spearborn will get fixed uh, in season seven and we'll have more information on that next week. Um, because just like usual, there's a lot of bugs with Spearborn and, and there's a lot of unintended things happening with the class. But besides that, they're going to let us play the rest of the season as is and just dominate absolutely everything. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go over this. There is no patch notes for this uh, campfire because we are going to have another one next week. And uh, that's going to have a whole bunch of crap. They said it's going to be a very, very long stream with a lot of stuff going into season seven as well as the season seven PTR. Um, but for today, we do have some information to finish out season six, just so you guys can really enjoy and some upcoming things. So let's get into some of these statistics because I'm pretty excited to talk about some of this stuff because, um, you know, we still got till January 11th or something like that in the season ends. So we got a long ways to go, um, before the season's over. So, uh, let's see what the kind of changes they have for us. 62% of all players have played the spirit born. Um, which is kind of crazy, and they compared it to uh, Sorceress last season, which it was the most played class at 32%, which is actually kind of insane how many people are actually playing Spearborn. But again, it isn't really that insane, because why wouldn't you when you can easily clear a pit 150 with the Spearborn, and you can barely do like maybe a 90 or maybe a 100 with basically the other five classes. So uh, yeah, it's, it's like a no-brainer, right? Uh, so let's get into some of the other things that is happening. So, of course, Spearborn is getting uh, a nerf in Season 7, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, they want us to feel strong and powerful. Talking about how do they do some of the changes here, which is like, you know, they just played whack mole and now they let stuff go through the season, but they'll fix stuff that um, breaks the performance of the game. You know, so if there's a lot of lagging, a lot of, you know, crashes, stuff that does that, then they're going to fix those immediately, right? Um, outside of that, there's really not a whole left that they did this season. Um, or in the midseason update, they are going to be buffing each and every single class. However, these are just small number buffs. These are not going to be things that are really just ex like exponentially going to buff every single class up to Spearborn. They stated that that's not going to happen. Um, they do feel that every single class right now is pretty balanced within range of each other, which is very good. However, when it's compared to Spearborn, it's just outclassed in every single way. So they do have some um, some buffs here to all the different classes. So there's some baseline buffs here with Upheaval, Hammer, Double Swing, and Rend. Again, these are just number buffs, which are really just kind of, you know, they're nice, but they're not the best. You get an example here of the battle mat aspect and just see the damage increase, which is really nice. Um, I really hope that more of this stuff kind of comes because it's nice to see um, even more skills that aren't really used a whole lot. Um, then we get into Druid here. Buffs all key passives. Uh, Lupine Ferocity has been buffed. One with Nature has been buffed. These are two skills and key passives that nobody uses on Druid. So hopefully they'll get some really good play out of there. Storm Chasers now goes up and does more damage. I think this is great for Tornado. Tornado's been a bread and butter build for the Druid for a very long time. Um, and it's good to see this get a nice buff. Um, and I want to point something out here, like on some of these abilities, which is kind of very frustrating as a sorceress player, which probably not anymore. I'm more of a rogue player now, but tornado has seeks and does increase damage where if this was a sorceress build or sorceress power, it would be tornado does seeks up to five and does negative damage, which is, I don't understand it, but it is what it is. Um, then they buff some of these uh, unique items just to do and make them do a little bit more damage and make them be more healthy, which is really nice. Um, class balancing for the Necromancer. Decompose got a buff. The passives got a buff here for Invulsion and the Bone stuff, which I think is really cool. Um, Necromancer has a chance to spawn. Again, guys, these are just number buffs. These not are None of the buffs that are coming into all of these classes are going to be multiplicative buffs. But I do think it is nice that some things are getting a little bit of a boost, right? So it can be it can be really nice. Uh, Rogue, buffing core skills, penetrating shot, and flurry. Flurry is actually kind of nice. Pen shot's always good. The victimized damage buff by 30% is it's nice. However, 
Again, it really doesn't help when there's such a delay on the actual key passive explosions actually happening. So an extra 30% really doesn't help. I mean, I guess it does help. It's better than nothing, but it is a nice buff. I really wish they wouldn't have changed Victimize and nerfing it two times over the last two seasons because my Dance of Knives build that I was so excited about is still with this 30% nerfed into the ground. So precision, very nice, very nice buff here. Now, when we get into things like the Sorceress here, um, combustion actually might be pretty strong because now the burning effects have the same increased damage, but an additional 25% X of your damage to burning bonus. So if you want to stack a bunch of damage to burning enemies bonus to make this go up even more, then you could really make some of these burning builds very, very strong. This might be one of the best buffs for Sorceress coming out from the mid-season update. They do have one for Avalanche. However, it's only a 25% multiplicative damage increase to vulnerable enemies as opposed to the chance for doubled. Uh, so this is just a one-time thing. This does not scale. However, if it did scale, that would be really nice. Um, the way I remember the way it reads, Blizzard is always about their wording. So as the way it reads, is damage is increased by an additional 25x against vulnerable enemies. So this does not scale like combustion. You know, not increased by your burning damage to burning enemies bonus. So if this was like 25x to your like with your vulnerable damage bonus. It's just not, maybe I'm misreading it here. Blizzard is very particular with their wording. So maybe you guys can dissect that in the comments. But still, Avalanche, very nice buff, better than before. And then this goes back here to what it was before. I'm glad that this change is happening. This needs to happen more with the Sorceress. I don't understand why this was ever a thing. Um, I just don't get it. I don't understand it. You know, it's the kiss and curse. So before we had, oh, Ice Shards Pierce, but then they deal less damage. Now Ice Shards Pierce and do increased damage. That's how it should be, right? Because every other class has powers that do this plus this. And Sorceress was the only class that had do X minus Y. So when it comes to like other classes and how powerful they are, it was very weird that Sorceress was always plus X minus Y when every other class was plus X plus X. So I'm glad that these changes are being made to the Sorceress, finally. Um, so uh, Aspect of Peace and Gold or Cold is really good. Now there's going to be new legendary aspects that scale based on the Charge Bolts Incinerate damage. So Charged Flash new is after it hits um, enemies 50 times, your next three casts become waves that pierce, uh, that, uh, pierce and critically surge on impact. Um, so instead of critical shock damage, they're just going to do a crit, which is really nice. And then there's one for burning, which is really good. After instant channeling incinerate for two seconds, it deals 100 times, 100% multiplicative increased damage for five seconds. Casting it incinerate refreshes this bonus. So like this stacked with that combustion might be pretty insane or any build, excuse me, like, um, you know, bouncy fireball or anything like that. Maybe meteors will be good. But combustion with incinerate seems pretty insane. Again, this is like the fifth season of them buffing, um, you know, incinerate. I think the devs really want us to use this. Uh, and then, oddly enough, if the Spiritborn wasn't already strong, they did buff Razor Wings and Wither Fist. They did mention that the reason that these buffs are actually happening is because these are skills that not, are, aren't used uh, basically at all, which makes sense because why would, you know... It's, it's the balance between, like, you want to use what's fun and good, but you also don't want to use anything that can't do any damage. So, like, Razor Wings did, like, no damage. Um, and Withering Fist is really nice. Um, there's still some really good builds with Withering Fist, to be honest. So, this little buff is going to be really good. Uh, but Spiritborn got another buff. Toxic Skin got a big buff because nobody uses Toxic Skin. So, um, yeah, small buffs to Spiritborn, which is already strong. But just keep in mind, guys, that the... Nerf to the Spiritborn will come in Season 7 with all of the stuff that, again, as we've been told for six seasons now, that is a bug and not intended. This seems to be coming up more and more each and every single season. Um, some new things that are, are coming back. Um, we are getting, if I can find it here, uh, coming in December or the new holiday. We are going to have the Red Cloaked Horror Returns. Um, it's... Oh, man. I don't know where to dissect what blizzard is doing for the events these holiday events are pretty terrible pretty lazy uh and just like i don't know like there's not really any ideas 
to to this event like it's the same event that we had last christmas and we're getting it again this christmas and holiday season we're getting mother's blessing again for 35 percent more xp which is really nice they're giving us a welcome back booster a welcome back booster is going to is a one-time boost to 50 along with some other stuff and then next week we'll talk about the ptr and the following stream but let me touch back on the events here these events are really bad these events are really bad they're I just feel like they're very lazy and to kind of touch on what some other people are talking about in the community is like Blizzard is just losing a lot of rep like a lot of their rep and stuff when it comes to these events. I don't think going forward guys, I can expect Blizzard to do any kind of innovative events. I think it's just going to be pretty much the same quick, easy, boring stuff that we get or that we have gotten just like with the, the the seasonal like mechanics like the run walker is you know i don't even know if that's a seasonal theme it's just an additional mechanic so um i hope that we get more seasonal themes like the vampiric theme they really need to build off that from season two uh that was fantastic so i hope that we get something like that back and they can build off that instead of this kind of stuff but it is very very disappointing to see that for our holiday theme, we got the red cloaked horror again, and we're not getting something brand new. It to me, it's pretty lazy, and it really ruins the reputation of Blizzard. But again, it's a business. I don't think they care enough to really change these things. So enjoy the red cloak, guys. But more importantly, the mother's blessing if you want to push to Paragon 300. Um, some additional information on Paragon 300 is that um, the Paragon 300 grind will the XP will not be nerfed in any way or not necessarily nerfed or lessened so they really do like that you only need to get to like paragon 100 maybe 150 to do absolutely everything in the game probably even less than that and you know if you really want to push to the high end you don't need to require all 300 paragon points to actually do it so it's really just a chase and they feel like it's in a really good spot so um if my math is correct from when we did it before guys it was roughly about 30 hours from paragon 280 to 300 and that's if you're farming very efficiently so that's just that's just from 280 to 300 which is the halfway mark getting to 280 is actually pretty easy but the rest is is a real grind so yeah guys that is everything coming to the diablo 4 season 6 mid mid season update we will have another stream next week uh, my overall thoughts are is like the small class balance uh, buffs are nice otherwise you know it's uh it is what it is. Oh, uh, no, uh, the only one buff to Rawhide, because I know you guys have been waiting for that. There is a buff in the mid-season update to Rawhide, which is only going to be a buff in the Legion event. So the rest of the Rawhide farming is exactly the same, but the Legion event will be getting a big buff. I don't know how big that buff is going to be, but I hope it goes back to the way it was. Because if so, then Legions will be the best way to farm uh, Rawhide, so that way you can actually masterwork your gear. Uh, but... That kind of, I mean, religions are good. They're just locked behind a time gate. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, guys, like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the midseason patch and what you're going to be doing for the rest of Season 6 and what you're looking forward to in Season 7. Don't forget to subscribe, guys, and as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.